Today, I bring you nothing but dread. Or rather, one of the dreads. That being Crowbar from the Transformer Studio Series line. This deluxe class figure was one that I was interested to get, while at the same time, very skeptical about. Stick around and we'll discuss everything to do with this guy in the latest Got Ba True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gapa. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Why wouldn't you? Check me out everywhere. Check out Machinery of Man and the Everything Factor. And this is Crowbar with a lot of dreadlocks coming off of him, both on the side and back behind his head. I thought they were attached to his head, but they aren't. This is a pretty heavy remold of the Last Night Berserker figure, which was pretty much a train wreck. I think most of us can agree on that. Although I do know people who really enjoy him and are a fan of him. Certain things were changed here. I think the look is fantastic for Crowbar. I even like the fact that it's pretty cohesive with Berserker. But because this mold has sort of been plagued with a lot of problems, how well was it going to turn out? Well, for a guy like me who has actually been a fan of the Studio Series and thinks that's what we should have been getting all along, you can understand why I might be worried about this guy. Now, I don't have the deluxe ratchet. Don't plan on looking at the guy. He just doesn't fit in my collection, but this guy certainly had a place. I picked him up when I saw him because I do think the robot mode looks fantastic. There are alterations made to him that I think are designed to improve his transformation method. Whether or not that succeeds, well, that's up to you to decide. I love the articulation he has in robot mode, and we'll see more of that later on. Basically, there's a lot of good and bad with this guy, man. A lot of good and bad. But how about I stop babbling now, and let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. Despite being generally impressed with the Studio Series line so far, I mean, I, I've said it a few times, this is what I think we should have always gotten for movie figures, that doesn't mean that every one of them is going to be an absolute wing. Case in point, we have Crowbar here. And I wish I could say that I was excited for him and that I really like him, but I can't. At least not completely. There are good things, there are bad things, and we're going to go over all of it. But before we do that, let's take a look at his box really quickly. As per usual, it's a box. Nice artwork down here of one of the dreads, of course, being Crowbar. Over here, nice again. Artwork on the side, the Autobot symbol up top. On the back, we have the product shots, his little one-line bio. Nothing super duper exciting there. And, of course, as with all of these, we can open it up. Remove the clamshell that's inside and take out the scene. It's, you know, it's, it's a nice scene, of course, and taking that out of it. Uh, it relates to Dark of the Moon. It's, you know, it's one of those, like, battle-type scenes where, again, we can take the figure and... I guess display him in here. It's a little, it's a little tougher with this guy since he has those huge dreads everywhere. I mean, he really embodies being a dread. Again, he comes with two of these melee things that Berserker came with. It's soft, rubbery plastic, but I'm not gonna pretend that the little spikes on it aren't kind of sharp. I mean, you could, you could poke yourself a little bit with those. But I, I can understand why it was done with soft rubbery plastic. It's trying to be somewhat safe, of course. There's a five millimeter peg down here. It does indeed go on, uh, go in his hand just fine. We have these sections again. I don't find they tab in as well on this guy as they did on Berserker. And as of yet, I haven't found a way to really store these anywhere underneath out of sight in vehicle mode. And here we have Crowbar once more. Okay, so very first thing is the little melee weapons. 
again, they go in his hand exactly like they did with Berserker. The paint apps. Of course, there's always improvement that could be done with these guys to make them a little more screen accurate. But this guy, this guy's not bad. I, I, again, there is detail you could add if you cared enough to do it. I'm going to say he's he's pretty much a solid eight and a half. You know, it's crowbar. You have these dreads on the sides, these dreads on this side, they can move a bit. All of this is soft, rubbery plastic. The dreads up top, I thought that they were connected to his head, but they're not. Like, the head is independent of those dreads, they're behind them. And the head can move left and right. We'll get into the articulation shortly. But eight and a half for his look. A lot of things here are different and remolded from Berserker. As a matter of fact, here he is next to Berserker. They, they scale very nicely. The head obviously completely different. The general skeleton, like the joints, the movements are pretty much the same, but the molding is really quite different. The Forearms on Berserker. I will note this. Here you have a connection of the window on the arm and you fold out this bottom piece. On Crowbar, we have the bottom piece connected to the arm and we fold out the window section. So just something worth noting there. As well, there's been a lot of debate regarding the legs. The legs basically have three pieces. The thigh, the shin, and the foot at least on Crowbar. With Berserker we have the, sh the thigh, the say knee and upper part of the shin, and then the lower part of the shin and his foot. But the bottom line is this, though there are three pieces that make up the leg on Berserker, three pieces that make up the leg on Crowbar, and they basically move the same. At the end of the day, when you look at the kind of rear end of the vehicle, the feet of Berserker are facing each other. If I'm not mistaken, the feet of Crowbar are facing away from each other. But it's basically the same thing, it's just the way the molding was done. If you didn't like Berserker, I don't think there's anything about Crowbar that's going to change that for you. Yes, they tried to improve a few things. The success of that, well that depends on <clears throat> your own taste. Some people have said, hey, Crowbar's way better because the changes they made are great. Some people have said, Crowbar is not as good because the changes that they tried to make, while I respect them trying to make it, just fell flat and failed. That's up to you to decide. I, I feel like that they're similar enough that if you liked Berserker, you're going to like Crowbar. If you didn't like Berserker, you're not really going to like Crowbar. Taking him out of it. So the articulation. In vehicle mode, assuming you can get him to stay together, he rolls fine. You know, if everything is lined up properly, he rolls no problem. In this mode, I do think the robot mode is improved over Berserker. We have a head that can go left and right. It can look a bit up. It can look well down. On Berserker, who I looked at, by the way, in episode 260... Yeah, I noted there how his head kept popping off of the ball joint if you looked at it the wrong way. That doesn't happen with this guy, so I think that's an improvement. The arms, well, they can go well out to the side. No problem. They can go all the way around. We have a nice bicep swivel. We have an elbow to definitely 90 degrees, maybe even 91, 92 degrees. The hands, again, they can kind of angle in a little bit, like Berserkers sort of could. They can angle in a little bit. They can, you know, they have a little bit of movement to them. Nothing great. The guy, does he have a waist? He does not seem to have a waist. That's a little unfortunate. Splits out to the side, about that far. Not perfect, but it's, it's all right. Leg can go very far forward and it can go back quite well. We have a thigh swivel, we have a knee to 90 degrees, 
We have feet that can kind of tilt forward and back a little bit, not side to side. And his feet are pretty solid, like he stands well. Now, a lot of people will note that out of package, his whole kind of pelvis section is forward, and so he sort of stands like this. You can angle it back. It doesn't really lock, per se, but you, you can angle the waist back. You just need to make sure that you have everything back here lined up correctly. You can angle the waist back, and he stands a little bit taller, and it looks good. I think the articulation is largely effective. You can get a lot of dynamic poses with the guy, that's for sure. He looks great in all of them. You can sort of move these around. I mean, I don't know how much they will bend up over time, especially if you leave him in vehicle mode. But I guess you could always fix them with some heat, like with a hair dryer or something. Overall, I think the articulation is a little bit better than it was on Berserker because of the feet and because the head doesn't pop off of the ball joint. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a solid eight. By the way, if you don't want to put his melee weapons in his hand, can you still put them on the sides here? Uh, you can. It's not, I don't find that it fits as well here in this little groove right here under his arm. I don't find it fits quite as well or securely as it did with Berserker. But I mean, you can do it, right? You can, you can put it there if you want. It's pretty tedious, at least it is on mine. It, it, it's threatening to pop out all the time. Okay, so then that brings us to the transformation. The guy is scoring well. He really is scoring well. Again, at this point, I would say, hey, he's a success in the studio series, <laughs> but we have to do that transformation. And while there are things that I think are improved and that I like about it, there's still an awful lot that I don't like about it. I will say this, though. Once he's in vehicle mode, the way that he sort of unfurls and unfolds to go back to robot mode is much nicer and much smoother. But that was true with Berserker as well. Once he was in vehicle mode, he was great to get back into robot mode. He was just getting him into that vehicle mode. Not fun. Let's see how it goes with this guy. So, where do we begin? Probably down around the feet is the easiest spot. So we straighten out the legs and we Actually, let me just rearrange things slightly here. So where do we begin? Well, we probably start by straightening out his legs. And, sorry, you actually flip out the tire, then straighten out his leg. Flip out the tire, which is the heel, and then straighten out his leg. Just like Berserker, you're going to turn the legs so that they face each other. And the panels on the back, which, you know, are down like that, those panels on the back, they're going to, again, come up on the side of the leg. And when they come up, there's a little rectangular tab here that should go into a slot on his leg, assuming you have stuff lined up correctly. I do find that getting that in the section on the thigh is a bit of a challenge. Maybe this side will go easier. That one's in. And you heard it snapping. This one over here is also in. You heard it snapping, you would think that that's nice and secure. Not really. It's not, it's not great secure. These sections here, you just line them up and you line them up. Again, I don't know why they used a gray hinge here. Probably should have been black. But this is, you know, this is basically what you have starting off. Okay. You can open that section out on his forearm, open that section out on his forearm. I guess you can straighten these out. And turn them like that. Just so we can sort of orient ourselves a little bit at the moment. Next, you take the legs and the waist and you kind of bend it all forward as much as you can. 
bring these arms up over his head if you didn't do it already and then the shoulder kind of collapses in Let's see if I can show it here the shoulder kind of collapses in right here bringing the arm very close to the side of the head so we collapse the shoulder in bring the head forward as much as we can collapse the shoulder in and of course we have the head brought forward as much as we can naturally the intention here is to bring all of this down and tab this section down right here to give us our wheel well over the rear tire. Seems easy enough, but again, it's, it's really not. Although maybe, you know, maybe, maybe this will be the time that it is. Maybe this will be the one time that it is. Actually, that went in nicely. Who would have expected that? Let's see if the other side goes in nicely. How lucky, how lucky can I be to have both sides here going nicely? Uh, actually, they went in pretty nicely. The head is down, tucked away here. I do find that it's a bit easier if you have the head kind of on the side a bit, instead of just straight on. But you can see now how this is gonna kinda come together. We can even, if you want, angle the grill and the front bumper and stuff forward. Now comes the part that annoys a bunch of people. Oh, also if you didn't do it already, fold the hands down and away. So, there. The dreads, they're on a hinge and they come back, these side ones anyway, come back through like a cavity here in the body. You angle them back. And angle this side back and this side back and they come back like I said on a cavity through the body these other dreads they also angle down and this is where things become less fun you need to kind of keep those dreads out of the way while you do the rest of this and that's easier said than done usually anyway just like with Berserker, you flip out that piece and you flip out the last piece. You're going to bring the whole roof section down. Again, it tabs in with a couple of tabs on this, tabs in kind of behind the tail lights of the guy. Should, should fit nicely. These pieces should go down on the side and tab in on the windows. Here's the problem. Because the windows are the piece that flips out, a lot of times I find when you push this down, you end up pushing the window in like that. And that's a nuisance. It means you gotta untab stuff and take it out. And a lot of times when you have to untab stuff and take it out, you end up untabbing the stuff on the side. Nevertheless, we will, we will attempt it here. Oh, you can also angle that forward for now. Bring that down, bring that down tap all of this in. Okay, I'm just going to take a second and solidify this because after you have it in, you really want to give it like a final push and then we'll finish this guy off. And while it took a minute or so of kind of fiddling and finagling to squeeze everything together, lo and behold, it was the easiest time that I ever did it. Once you have the stuff in position, you know, it's hard to show because really what you're doing is sort of, you know, squeezing it down, squeezing it in. I find it's easier if you fit the side pieces in and kind of tab here and then kind of do the back here last if you can do it. But this whole back section then, once you have the front fitted in, does kind of like to pop off. So it's sort of up to you. But at this point, you just, now comes the easy part. You just bring that down front, bring that in. Bring that down front, bring that in and solidify it. And now, now we're just about done. You have a, a choice, I suppose. You can leave these out back or you can do as I'm tempted to do and just cut off that length of them. But what, of course, you're supposed to do coming underneath here and you get a, a look underneath there as to what this should be like. You're supposed to fold these up underneath. 
Doing so may pop things. They don't really have anywhere per se to go. But once you kind of fit them up, boom, in the end, there you go. We're going to refocus on him now and take a closer look. So again, he looks like Berserker. I mean, he's mostly black. He has blue windows, dark blue, but it's blue. He rolls all right. That being said, the dreadlocks do sometimes get in the way. As far as his melee thingies go, I don't see anywhere underneath to put them, but as previously mentioned, you can, once again, put them in kind of just above the wheel well on the side if you are so inclined. And if they want to stay in there, you know, you can do, you can do it like that so that it looks, looks like that. It's not really in disguise, but you can do that on both sides. His transformation is fiddly. I don't like the dreads not really having somewhere proper to go. Maybe they're just a little bit too long. I'm not sure. I don't think I would leave him in this mode for too long because those dread pieces being folded up will definitely get bent out of shape. Is it a better conversion than Berserker? I think it's about the same. I mean, it changed certain things to be better. And what it changed, I think it succeeded at, but it also remolded certain things to make it a little bit harder, like these back windows. Maybe that shouldn't have been done. I'm going to say that his conversion is somewhere, somewhere around a five, six. It's not perfect. It's not that fun, but I will say this. When you actually get it, when you actually succeed at it, the end result is nice. I just wish we didn't have this gray hinge here again, but Come on, everybody has said that. I'm going to say, overall, he is about... He's about a 7. He's not a standout of the Studio Series. I do like the fact that he's cohesive with Berserker. And because there's a couple of dreads that could potentially use an update, we might see this mold a couple of more times. Either you like it or you don't. For me, I think he's all right, but there's ones in the line that I personally enjoy way more. And here we are once again. We have Crowbar here. Berserker's behind me somewhere. It, it, he's all right. Do I think that he's the best from the Studio Series? No, I don't. Do I think he's the most fun? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, when I'd done his conversion for this review, it was the best time that I had ever done it. I will say this though, normally, and I don't know why this would affect anything, normally I fold his hands in first before tabbing these sections on. This time I tabbed these sections on and then folded the hands down after, kind of over his toes. And that seemed to help. It seemed to solidify things a little bit, so maybe a lesson learned. Is it an improvement over Berserker? In certain ways, yes. In certain ways, no. If you didn't like Berserker, I don't think this guy's going to change your mind. If you did like Berserker, then I think you're going to be happy with this dude. I love the alt mode. And I love the robot mode. I, I just find the go-between a little bit on the frustrating side. I picked this guy up at EB Games here in Canada. Shockingly, they seem to be getting a lot more collector-oriented stuff. Uh, including things from, for example, ThinkGeek. And I, I I've been learning a lot in talking to people there as I've been picking these guys up. Uh, also, some Power of the Prime stuff has been coming in there, which is great to see. I love to see some brick and mortar diversification. They will also, or at least around here, they've gone kind of the extra mile and actually called around to other stores, not even just ones in my province, but in other provinces, kind of trying to find things for me. If you know something is coming out there, it's worth checking with them to see if they have it, to see if they can order it in for you. And you can probably even pre-order it at no cost, which is kind of fantastic. These are just things that I've learned. I think that a lot of that is great business practices, and I think that it's 
great to see these guys showing up there as it gives us collectors another option for the toy hunt, even if it elongates when you actually get in your car and go out to do a toy hunt. Nevertheless, am I glad to have this guy? Yeah, I'm glad to have him. Is he going to be, you know, a, a star favorite of mine? No, he's not because of the kind of fiddliness of the conversion method. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. Maybe you are Berserker's biggest fan, and therefore maybe you're also Crowbar's biggest fan. And, and hey, if you have a bright idea about how to handle folding these pieces away, let me know, because they just don't really seem to go anywhere. Anyway, thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time. I know how much it means to you. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.